Hello again and welcome to another Warhammer 40k Mordian Glory video. Today I want to run you through one of my favourite units and tactics from the new 9th edition book. It is known as the Dreadnought. This tactic revolves around building an incredibly durable command squad that is not only able to take the fight to the enemy, but it can also score you lots of primary and secondary points. And at the same time, it is an absolutely hilarious tactic because it involves one of the best characters in Warhammer 40k, Nork Dedog, the most decorated ogre and bodyguard in all of Imperial Guard history. Now you're probably screaming at your computer right now, Molly and Glory, you handsome fellow, stop cock me and tell me how to build this amazing command squad, this unkillable anvil on which my enemies will smash themselves upon. Well, don't worry, I will get into it right now. Without further ado, let's dive into today's video. So it starts off fairly simply. You need yourself a Cadian command squad. Now I'm being very specific here. You need the Cadian command squad because it's going to give you access to a very very important stratagem later on. So a regular platoon command squad will not do. You need a Cadian command squad, okay? Now, in that command squad, you are going to want the following models. An officer with a power sword. You're also going to want a medic, a regimental standard, a massive ox, and that last veteran. I would also recommend giving him a power sword as well. Now, I know some of you are going to be raising an eyebrow at me taking a veteran with a power sword, but there is a very good reason for it. We want a more combat orientated unit. We want a squad that's going to have enough combat punch to not only be able to charge an enemy unit and take them off the objective and hold it for ourselves, but also have enough combat punch that if the enemy decides to counter charge an objective that we have moved this unit onto, it's not going to be an easy fight for them. There's going to be lots of power weapons inside that unit. However, do not stress it. If you don't want to put a power sword on that veteran, you would rather have a melt gun or a plasma on that last guy. Absolutely go for it. My personal preference is the power sword, but it really does come down to dealer's choice with that last veteran. Now, once we've got the base models in that command squad sorted out, it's time to add a couple of advisors. And the first one you're going to want to add is an astropath, and that astropath is going to want to know the psychic power Night Shroud. Now, the reason we're picking the Night Shroud psychic power is it helps us layer on defensive buffs onto this command squad. How Night Shroud works is it has a warp charge value of six, and the unit that you successfully cast it on can only be hit on a four plus. That's right. It doesn't matter if you are a Custodes. It doesn't matter if you are Rebute Gilliman himself. You can only hit this unit on a 4 plus. A 1, 2, or a 3 always fails. Little side note here. This kind of ability is not that uncommon in Warhammer 40k. And in fact, within many competitive circles, it now has the nickname of Trans Hit. So essentially, what Night Shroud does is it gives this squad Trans Hit. Now, the next advisor we want to add to the unit is the big man himself, it is Nork Dedog. Now, the reason I like taking Nork Dedog over a standard Ogren bodyguard is he does actually have quite the improved stat line over your standard Ogren bodyguard, and he only costs 10 points more base. But more than likely, if you do take a regular Ogren bodyguard, you're going to want to give it a slab shield and some Bulgrim plate or some other stuff like that. And so realistically, Nork Dedog essentially costs the same as a standard Ogren bodyguard once you factor in the almost mandatory equipment. However, Nork does have a better stat line. In fact, he comes with an extra wound, which really is the main kicker here. That's the main thing we want him for. We're trying to make units as durable as possible. Easiest way to do that is to stack as many wounds into the unit as possible. Nork also comes with an extra weapon skill and ballistic skill over regular Ogren bodyguards. And having an Ogren like Nork hitting on twos in combat, it's actually really nice. That huge knife combined with his thunderous headbutt means that Nork has great damage output both in combat and he's no slouch at shooting either. Ballistic skill 3 plus Ripper Gun is very nice. It's got some flat damage too out there and it's got a decent rate of fire as well. So overall, I find Nork to be a fantastic upgrade over the regular Ogre Bodyguard, well worth the additional 10 points. Now that we have got both the base models and the advisor sorted out for the squad, there is one more thing we need to do, and that is take a relic for the unit. Now, we are going to want to put the Death Mask of Alonius Pius on our Cadian officer. Now, the Death Mask is a really nice little relic. It gives the bearer and his entire unit a 
four plus invulnerable save. That is going to go a long way to increasing the durability of this squad. Now that covers all of the equipment, the characters and the relics that you're going to need for the Dreadnought. But we also need to mention the CP. This unit will likely need a CP, maybe two, funneling into it every single turn. The main stratagem that you're going to be using with this unit is Cadia Stands. Now, Cadia Stands is a one CP stratagem and it can only be used on a Cadian unit. This is why we took the Cadian Command Squad, because a Platoon Command Squad wouldn't have access to the stratagem. Now, what it does is pretty simple. It gives your unit transhuman physiology. Basically, what that means is it can only be wounded on a four, five, or six. It doesn't matter if you hit them with a volcano lance. It doesn't matter if you crash a Blackstone fortress into this squad. It can only ever be wounded on a four, five, or six. Now, this stratagem can be used in any phase. It can be used both in the shooting phase and the fight phase. And so that means, realistically, depending on how aggressive you're being with this command squad, you're probably going to need to put the CP into it you know, most shooting phases, but you also might need to use KD stands again in the combat phase. So just make sure that when you're playing with the Dreadnought, you always got at least one CP in your back pocket because you don't know when you're going to need to pop KD stands and make this squad very, very durable. So once we put this all together, what do we have? Well, Thanks to Nork and his big target rule, the whole squad counts as having toughness 5 as long as Nork is alive. He does have to tank all the damage, but by being toughness 5, it makes the unit much more durable against small arms fire. In fact, anything like a las gun or a bolt or anything like that is going to be wounding the squad on a 5+. plus. On top of this, Nork also reduces all damage by 1 thanks to the Wall of Muscle special rule. Thanks to the Death Mask of Alonius Pius, the entire unit, including Nork, has a 4 plus invulnerable save. And thanks to the Medic, the entire unit has a 5 plus to ignore wounds, also known as a 5 plus feel no pain. Cadia Stands allows us for 1 CP a turn to give Nork and his unit the transhuman physiology, which means even if you hit them with something that is stronger than Toughness 5, they're still only going to get wounded on a 4+. Plus. And then to top it off, we've also got the Astropath casting Night Shroud, which means that the unit is going to have a trans hit ability and can only be hit on 4s, which means in total, you have a unit which can only be hit on 4s, it can only be wounded on 4s, it has a 4 Four plus invulnerable save and it also has a five plus feel no pain and the guy standing at the front tanking all the damage reduces it by one which is even if you do get something through it's going to be reduced by one and then not on a five plus it's just going to go oh i didn't feel it this means that at nearly every stage of the process of going through attacking and wounding this unit, the damage by your opponent is halved. So only half the shots are going to hit. Only half of those shots are going to wound. You're only going to fail half of those saves. And even if you do fail the saves, you've then got a 33% chance to start ignoring the wounds. Layers upon layers upon layers of durability for this unit. And the most incredible part is that if Nork somehow does go down, you can just get him back up again. There is a 1 CP stratagem in the Guard Codex called Battlefield Surgery, and it restores D3 models to the squad, and it specifically says those D3 models get restored at full wounds now i know some people are going to say oh man that's clearly a mistake they don't intend for that to be used with not dead dog well hang about because the stratagem also says you can't use it on officers and here's the only other multiple wound model that you can put in a command squad everyone else from the veterans to the astropath to the master fleet master of ordinance all that kind of stuff they've only got one wound so the only reason that they would include the text and restored on four wounds is for things like Nork and Ogren Bodyguards. So whilst it might seem unintended, as far as I can see, it actually is intended and has been written like that for a very specific purpose. I have to be honest, I find this stratagem absolutely hilarious because how I'm imagining it in my head is Nork just eats one too many las cannon bolts for lunch and the officer just glances over to the medic and gives him a nod and the medic just pulls out this giant elephant sized syringe of adrenaline just goes up to Nork and just stabs it into his buttocks and Nork's eyes just 
burst open. He's just like, I wasn't, I wasn't dead, so I was just sleeping. Nork's back in business. You know, I can just imagine that, like, Nork, remove the dirty, sir. You know, all this kind of stuff. I can just imagine it. So it just makes, you know, the medic isn't performing surgery on Nork. He's just slapping another, you know, elephant shot on his backside. Now, I know one of the big questions that a lot of people are going to be asking is, why? Why would you want to take this squad? Firstly, it's not cheap. It's 175 points to put this combination together. Are you really going to get 175 points worth out of this squad? That's another Lemurus tank commander you could be taking, Morning Glory. Well, I think this unit actually is worth it because I think it can do two very important things on the battlefield. The first thing it does is it plays the primary objective game very well. This unit is durable enough that you can march it onto an objective in no man's land and you're going to hold that objective. Unless your opponent dedicates some incredible levels of damage output towards this unit he is going to bounce off it i have personal experience with this this is not a theory craft video i have tested the dreadnought out a full dark elder army unloaded its firepower into the dreadnought and followed it up with a charge led by drozar and this unit was still around yeah nork went down and so did a couple of the other squad members but the rest of them were around and that meant i could slap battlefield surgery down and i could bring those squad members back so what you can do is reliably march this unit into the middle of the board. You can take an objective. And if you're playing a five objective game, this essentially just locks one of those out for your opponent. He's going to have to go somewhere else because it's going to take him a lot more than 175 points of his army to try and deal with this dreadnought. Now, this unit can happily set an objective and just help score you points every single turn. If you're playing a six objective map, one of those ones that requires you to hold at least two objectives in order to score any primary points, this unit is fantastic for making sure you do get those primary objectives. How many times have you played one of those six objective hold two missions and you've ended up only being able to hold two and then your opponent's turn, he blasts you off one of the middle ones because your infantry isn't that durable and suddenly it comes around to your turn and you've missed out on primary. Damn, how frustrating. We've all been there. But if you've got the Dreadnought, you can happily hold your home one and you can move on to at least two other ones in the middle and know that there's a great chance that after your opponent's at his best effort, you're still going to be holding two and you're still going to be getting primary points. Other thing this unit does very well is score secondary objectives. Principally, it's very good at boosting up boots on the ground boots on the ground is a really nice secondary objective for the guard in fact it's one of the more popular ones and the main part of that secondary objective is for each table quarter that you have an infantry unit in you score a victory point now most people just think about oh well i'll try and get as many infantry squads into the table quarters as i can and i should be able to score reasonably sort of about 10 points on this objective now bear in mind you can't actually score boots on the ground in the first turn so you can't just sit in two table quarters the whole game you do have to try and move into that third one now, again, some armies, it can be very tricky to push out over that halfway point. You can try your best, but maybe they're just particularly ferocious in melee. Maybe they're just great at shooting you. It can be tricky to try and get those extra boots in the ground points. Normally, most players can end up with 8 to 10 points fairly reliably, but getting over that can sometimes be a little bit tricky. This is where the Dreadnought comes in. You see, there is actually a second part to the Boots on the Ground secondary objective that a lot of people kind of dismiss, but one that actually is very important when it comes to the Dreadnought. You see, the other part of the Boots on the Ground objective is if you have a command squad with a regimental standard within six inches of the center of the board, you score an extra victory point. That means you can just take the Dreadnought, you can march it into the middle of the board and it will score you a victory point every single turn. Now that means even if you don't move out of your two home table quarters, if you're able to get that Dreadnought into the middle of the board from turn two onwards, you're looking at an additional four victory points, which means without any effort, without having to go into any enemy table quarters, you're looking at 12 victory points. And if you are able to get into the enemy table quartz as well, it makes maxing out boots on the ground an even easier possibility. And it's this ability of the Dreadnought to actually be able to score points in game, which makes me love it. It makes it one of my 
favorite tactics on the battlefield. Because not only does it just feel right to run a fully pimped out command squad with bodyguards and advisor, it just looks amazing on the battlefield seeing that properly fleshed out command echelon. But the fact that this unit also is very, very good on the battlefield, can actually score points. It's not just this unit that runs around and does a bit of damage and then can't really be killed. It's a unit that actually has a proper battlefield purpose can help you win games and looks fantastic at the same time and it's just an absolute meme at the end of the day nor dead dog is one of the funniest and just most lovable characters in the warhammer 40k universe i mean look at that giant cigar that guy is chonking on he's just he just looks like an absolute character like an absolute weapon and so it's because of that and because of the fact that he's actually great now and this tactic just feels the tactic feels very feel good it feels nice that's why I really, really like this tactic. But that's everything I've got for today's video. But let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Do you like this tactic or do you think it's just a bit of a meme and isn't really going to work? What armies do you think this would be very effective into? And which armies do you think would be able to deal with the Dreadnought? If you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you smash that like button and also subscribe to the channel to make sure you never miss an episode. If you've really enjoyed today's video or you found it particularly helpful and you want to go the extra mile and support the channel, then please consider becoming a channel member or Patreon supporter. It is thanks to the generous support of the channel members and patrons that I'm able to do this gig full time now. And that means I can put extra effort into every single video and I can spend more time researching and coming up with even better tactics. One of the biggest perks being a channel member or patron supporter is you gain access to the Morgan Glory Discord, which is a community of over 600 active members there's always somebody to talk to and there's loads of very very experienced players in there there's everything from memes to tactics from painting and hobbying hell we've even got a very active dark tide community in there as well so if that sounds like a ton of fun and also might be a pretty useful resource to you then please consider becoming a channel member or patreon supporter and i just want to take a moment now to say a special thank you to all of the latest channel members so a big thank you to g the knight Ralph Risk, Josh Greenfield, Jeffrey Cole, Ozzy Mandicles, Electro Halo 8, Max Dealey, The Wizard MF, Still Hammer Jake, Tim Christiason, Trays in the Infinite, Roger Hollenbeck, Desperate Measures, Larry Hunkin, Exodus, Rowan, Eamon, Reg, Joseph K, Felix, 15 Glorious Minutes, Andrew, Victor, Stephen, Flumbosaurus, Maltese Falcon 5, Charles, Lindo, Greg, Yannick, Gary, Git, Scott, Nuri, Aaron, Mike, Nick, Connor, Pippins Tickle, Austin, Taylor, Yusuf Sidekick, Simon Evans, Earl, Matt Z, Wow, Edgeless, Alex, Juju, Morvox, Matthew Muto, Nolan Beck, Hashan, Mark, Shrub, Kempo Ninja 187, and Jamie Hall. Thank you guys for becoming a channel member. Thank you for doing your part. And I also want to do a shout out for the latest Patreon supporters as well. So a big thank you to Max, Dart, Sean Koch, Mark Lee Sim, Nack, Riley, Alex Wilson, Joshua, James Harrison, Jesse Thompson, Noah, Tristan D and 32mm Matt. And last but certainly not least, I want to say a special personal heartfelt thank you to all of my top tier supporters these are the war masters the people who have truly gone above and beyond the call of duty when it comes to supporting the Morgan glory channel so a massive thank you and an 07 to bon bon vert navy veteran phil french ross miller tequal alex dengal john stubbs nick walsh swordfish trombone diesel fox tom sutton and august varney thank you guys for your ongoing and generous patreon support it really does make a huge huge difference i hope you all enjoyed today's video thank you for watching and of course as always i'll see you guys next time